I'd like to ask you what you think of the 26th verse in the first chapter of Genesis means when it says, and God said, let us. Now, who does that refer to? Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. Yes. All right. Let us when make man in our image after our likeness. I'd like to ask you what us means. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask you what our means. It's a Hebrew plural and it refers to the members of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Then and you do believe in, the, in more than one God. I believe in three persons who are one God. What makes a God? What makes a God? Yes. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I think I see what you're getting at, and I'm trying to avoid it desperately. Well, you hadn't better try. Uh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to avoid You're going to get in trouble if you do. I'm trying to avoid it desperately for one reason. I'll be here another ten minutes, and I don't want to do that. Well, you'll okay. be here longer than that. I'll answer it head on. That's Thank what you, you want. And uh, here it comes. Uh, there is only one true and living God by nature, and that is one living and true God who is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, and who is God by nature. That is, he depends upon nothing for his existence. He is eternal. That makes God. There is only one. You think that's kind of a hocus-pocus answer? I thought it was rather direct. What do you think makes God? There, one eternal person. Fa oh, one eternal God. being, yes. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why right, he's one eternal person. I he, one eternal, no, wait a minute. I said one eternal being, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, but what, who does this article, or this verse refer to when it says us and I just our. told you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three. Are one God. All right, now, but there are three persons here. And they're one God. Well, that's all right. I'm not saying they're not one in purpose, but they're three persons. The Lord doesn't go ahead and mutter to himself like he's an imbecile. Now, would you say that again? Yeah, I'll repeat it. God's talking to somebody besides himself here. Obviously, you're a Mormon. Well, that doesn't make any difference. That doesn't what make a difference. What difference does it make whether I'm Mormon or a Christian? Well, you're a Mormon. I'm asking you this question. I know, I understand. You're a Mormon. All right. Well, no, there anything? Is he talking to somebody else or not? He's talking to the Father, he's talking to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Is he talking to, let's say, me, myself, and I? Apparently you didn't come to my lecture on the Trinity. Well, I certainly didn't, but I'm... That I would have saved, that saved you asking me this question. When God, store all the time, and I'm asking you a perfectly good question. And I gave you a perfectly good answer. There's one God who manifests himself as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I would like to quote a good authority for that particular teaching. Well, I don't need any authority for that, do you? You don't? No, no, I don't. It says here plainly. In other words... And God said, let us make... Wait a second. Yes? You have to have authority for a doctrine. Well, I've got it here in the first chapter of the Genesis, the 21st fine. verse. Fine, fine. But I want you to turn to Deuteronomy 6.4. Well, does that make now any just difference? Just turn to, to Deuteronomy six four. All right, you turn to Matthew. Fine. I'll give you another one. Turn to Deuteronomy six four. You turn to the Savior in the Garden of Gethsemane when he says, "Oh Father, if it is Thy will, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but Thine be done." Now, who is he talking to? Jesus is talking to his Father because there are three persons who are the one God. All right. Now, is Christ God? Yes, sir. And he's talking to his Father that's God? Yes, sir. Does that make two or one? One. Just one, just one individual? No. I, I would, now, now, I'm sir, asking this congregation here. Not sir, you. sir. I'd if be I happy. Was praying uh, to sir. Me, I wouldn't be sir, praying to myself, would I? Sir. Yes. I would be happy to answer your question if you would be silent a moment. I'll try, but it's hard. <laughs> well, 
what we have to do, what we have to do is to discuss the Mormon doctrine of God and the Christian doctrine of God. And we have to do it this way. I am a Christian who believes that there is only one God. Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Now let me finish. But now let me finish. Right, you are a Mormon and you believe that there are many gods. And you believe that you're going to become one someday. Now by definition, you are a polytheist and I am a monotheist. The doctrine of the Trinity teaches, listen carefully, that there are three persons, all of whom are called God. And yet there is only one God. That's what the Bible says. I doesn't say that at all. Oh, yes, it does. But you missed the lecture. No, you're one minute here. I you missed the you lecture, didn't you? I'm saying is... You Did you miss minutes. the lecture on the Trinity? I... Did I, you? Let me ask you... Did you miss the lecture on the Trinity? Yeah, but it wouldn't make... Okay, difference. yeah. Well, I know it wouldn't make any difference because you're not going to listen. The fact of the matter is, when I ask you a perfectly straight question here, when God was talking to these individuals, when they were creating this earth and putting Adam here, he said to these people who he was with, let us make God in our image. Make God in our image? Make Adam in our image. Man in our image. Man, yes. If you want That's a different call. story. Adam was the man I presume that he was making. You believe the Book of Mormon is the Word of God, don't you? Listen, you're Do you very believe the word of the God? Subject. Are you trying to get off the subject now? I'm going to answer you from the book. I'm going to answer you from the Book of Mormon. You answer me from this book right here. Well, you're a Mormon, so I got to quote you on. No, book. I'm, I'm, I'm believe the Bible to be the word of God more fully than you do, if possible. Pardon? I believe the Bible to be the word of God just as surely as you do, and I think, in my experience, more fully than most Christian people, when you take it as it states, in try, instead of trying to spiritualize it or make something out of it other than what God... Uh, do you have a question for me? I'll try and answer it. All right, I've asked you two or three times who God was talking with here. I told you he was talking with the Son and with the Holy Spirit, and that's my answer. All right, then you acknowledge that there were two of them there. Two persons. Two individuals. Right. All right, that's my answer. There's two gods. No, sir. That's not what I said. I think the group here will, will agree with me. I never said it. I never said it. All right, then you ask, you ask my other question. Who is Christ begging so sincerely to that he sweat drops of blood when he says, Oh, Father. Look, we already now, discussed Now, who is he this. talking to? We already discussed this by pointing out that he was talking to his father. Uh, the gentleman is a, a Mormon or with Mormon sympathies and um, he's confused on the doctrine of the Trinity as we understand it. I think the best thing to do is to quote, since he says there's more than one God, the Book of Mormon, which I will now do. The Lord God had preserved for a righteous people, and he had sworn in his wrath unto the people of Jared, that whoso shall possess this land of promise from that time henceforth and forever should serve him the true and only God. And Zedrim said unto him, Thou sayest there is a true and living God? And Amalek said, Yes. There is a true and living God. Now Zizram said, is there more than one God? And he answered, no. From his own book, there is only one God. Yet what you heard now is the standard operational procedure to attempt to say that in Trinitarian theology we believe in three gods, which is not what the Christian doctrine of the Trinity is. That's why I went into such great detail the other night. So when you deal with the Mormon, be prepared for this. Jesus is talking to himself. No, he's talking to the Father. Then there's more than one person. Right. Then there's another God. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says the three persons are the one God. There is only one God. The Bible and the Book of Mormon both agree. The Bible and the Book of Mormon both agree that there is only one true and living God. The Book of Mormon contradicts that gentleman chapter and verse. I would suggest he study his own book.